everybody welcome to another episode of the lit rpg podcast episode number 243 of the show uh, i'm ramon mehim here to bring you the latest lit rpg news reviews and of course not their interviews this week i have three new reviews threats for you folks at home uh that's it no nothing else just those three reviews a little bit of news um and just that's that's it so uh, let's start off with an books i'm going to be reviewing for you this week uh that's going to include pre-souls apocalypse rewind a dark fantasy liberty series also fragment of divinity a lit rpg adventure to find divinity book number one and second life ranker which is actually going to be a webcomic um as i've done the last couple weeks i've been getting into these lit rpg webcomics a little bit more people seem to be enjoying the the free content a little bit of something different uh, uh free reads uh, on the internet in general. Uh, but before we start into any of those reviews, of course, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. And in Lit RPG News, we're going to begin with a quick uh, message from S.O. Roland, uh, author of uh, Sentence to Troll. He has a, a new series called The NPC's Cobalt's Tale. Um, and he sent a message out to his readers this week saying that he ordered new cover art that better reflect the tone of Path to Villainy. Hopefully, more people will give it a chance now. Um, and this might be reflective of. Uh, something that we also said for our review of this particular novel and that it was entertaining. It was a lot more of an actual true villainous like path for, for a character, but the cover kind of didn't re reflect that. Like I genuinely like the character, but the posing, um, the background didn't kind of reflect the, the tone of the story. Not that it was bad cover. I just, Oh, it didn't, it didn't tell me as a reader, Oh, this is, what the story is going to be out at, as a way of selling it to me. This new cover, which is on the, the right half of the screen, uh, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, um, I think it does a slightly better job of like, conveying kind of the darker villainous tones of the story. Um, so hopefully picks up sales for this story because it's like I said, I, I enjoyed it. It's just not a lot of people were picking it up. So I'm like, hopefully this does what the author intends. Um, in other lit RPG news, we have Michael Chatfield, author of the Amarillo series, the Ten Realm series, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, he's given an update about his release schedule. He says, hello, everyone. I wanted to share a bunch of updates. The Trap Mind Project audiobook is on sale on Kobo right now. Um, we'll have a link in the show notes. But uh, Kobo is an alternative to Amazon and a bunch of other places. Um, so it is legitimately on sale. I think it's like five bucks US. Um, so pick that up. That's for sure. Uh, he also says the sixth one part one will be available on Amazon September 18th and a week earlier for people in the, I want more on his Patreon. He also says, I don't have a release date for part two yet, but it should be within a few months at most. Then it moves on and says possessor of the heart. The second death Knight audiobook is now available on audible audible uh, and most audiobook stores. He says also the, I'm starting to share chapters from the Fifth Realm audiobook on Patreon. The first one is free and the rest available for people in the ahead of the curve with audio and above tiers. So there you go. Again, link in the show notes for his Patreon page and also um, all the links that he shared with us, including the Kobo sales page for the Trap Mind Project audiobook, which again, I think is about five bucks US, which is much cheaper than it is at the locations. Okay, on to more plagiarized stories. Yeah, it's every single week. <laughs> It seems like there are more and more. Um, this has actually been going on for, oh, months, six months at least. Um, I just kind of got tired of seeing these plagiarized stories. And instead of just leaving one-star reviews for them, because I know they're plagiarized, I decided to also let you guys know on the podcast that these stories exist. They're ripping off online stories of, of other authors. And uh, and I've confirmed with a lot of these authors saying, oh, somebody might be plagiarizing your story and publishing on Amazon, I get a flood of messages back saying, hey man, thanks a lot. I was able to put in a copyright infringement notification with Amazon, hopefully get this taken down. How many of those actually go through? I don't know, but uh, that's kind of the only way to, to, to knock these out as far as uh, the author goes and permanently taking it down. Um, us as readers, if we find them um, and we can confirm that they are um, indeed plagiarized, um, I 
try to one star review them so at least other readers know that this is not a legitimate story. If you find that's the case, um, you know, feel free to do so because it's legit criticism for a title. And the best thing I, I, I can always do is try to make it unprofitable for the group or the people plagiarizing these online stories. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm just going to list them off, uh, including again off in the, in the show notes the original link to the original work, and also I actually th- thought about including the um, link to the fake one. So in case you haven't come across it or you want to leave a one star review, you can do so. Um, the first one is a fantastic world. It's a stolen from the web novel story, peaceful life in a different world. Um, Andromeda Quest is stolen from the web novel. Um, from the story Searching for Andromeda, written by Chainslock. And man, that cover out on the original looks like 10 times better than the fake one. Um, Steel Titan is stolen from the Royal World story, from story uh, from the story Titan of Steel. So all they did is flip the, flip the title and uh, change some character names. Um, also, Retrograde Gaming um, is actually this, uh, uh, it's taken from the web. Uh, web novels, which is again, not, not just a web novel as a description of what this is, where it's written, but also it's actually like place. It's an actual website called web novels. Um, it's actually stolen from a translation of something else that was posted on web novels, but it's the same name, retrograde gaming. Um, the original version is written by flamboyant may this new, you know, ripped off one is, is just fake. Um, so there you go. There's the only ones I could find this week. Um, so this definitely beats last week, which is I, I found eight last week. I found and nine the week before, I think. Um, and so just having like four, I think that that's actually showing, hopefully, that we're making this unprofitable for these plagiarists. So yay, I guess. <laughs> okay, um, on to stuff that is out now for you to enjoy. Stuff that's here, right? Have, have, haven't reviewed it personally, but it's out for you to enjoy. A Snake's Path, book number two. Also, uh, I'm also surprised release. This actually had a real short period of release. Uh, uh, something, M- Full Murder Hobo, book number one, written by Dakota Crowd, which is me. It's, it means it's already going to be good. I know that. Um, but also on Amazon, it's doing superbly. I think it already hit the top 100. I want to say it like was on 20 on all of Amazon, uh, all Amazon's page, which is like supreme. Um, and I, I love the title because it, it definitely reflects Dakota's pun humor where it's like, oh, go read something, go do something. Hey, look, watch something. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason he put that in the title as the title of the novel, something. Um, also out though, um, Dungeon World, a reborn online liberty adventure. Also, Prime Verse, Trial by Magic. Also, Fragment of Divinity, a liberty adventure, Defying Divinity Book Number, which actually I should take this out because we're reviewing this on the podcast this week. Uh, also, out is Sand Queen, Rise of Omniscience, Book Number Seven, and The Realms of Tween, Book Number Seven, and also Blasphemy Online, Volume Two. And there you go. And also, The Rift Hopper. So, there we go. We have all these stories ready for you to enjoy for this week. Um, new audiobooks is going to include Crimson Queen, a fantasy liberty series. Also, The Mechanical Crafter book number two. That was actually mine, uh, but it is a new release. just came out this past couple days. Please go enjoy it. Check it out. A lot of people seem to enjoy the, the ebook version. You might enjoy the audiobook version. Um, also, I right now for you to enjoy is Level Up um, update the knockout book number two so that's the second book in the spin-off series the level up series called uh, knockout um also out right now is the second book in the save point series reload as an audiobook also out is the grind and adventures of brad book numbers four through six which is an omnibus book um so it actually has book numbers four through six in the series collected together for your audiobook enjoyment all for one little credit if you go for that so it's a nice five read or listen in this case okay in upcoming liberty we have some really great stuff coming out and first off the bat is going to be on september the 15th glory to the brave ascend online book number four by uh, luke chimalenko um i'm sure everybody's looking forward to this if you haven't read this series it's one of the best um and luke has been you know kicking butt on this particular series since since he published book number one a while ago um, also out on September the 15th is going to be Stolen Lives, the Underhill Chronicles book number one. On September, September the 16th, it'll be the Guild Core Dragonborn, uh, B-O-U-R-N-E. 
There you go. On September the 18th, it'll be Claimed Olympus Reborn, book number three. September 21st, it'll be The Eternal Journey, book number three. September 29th, second book in the Tycoon series. September 29th is the second book in the Zero Hero series called It's a Superpowered RPG. On September 30th, it'll be The Tester, book number one, The Great MacGuffin. On September 30th as well, it'll be The God's Game, volume number four. October the 1st, it'll be The Bad Guys, book number five. October the 1st, it'll be Legends Online, book number seven. On October the 2nd, Dungeon Crawler Carl from The Amazing Matt Dinneman. October the 3rd, it'll be the third book in the Awaken Online side series called Inferno. I was right, the Interior series um, called it, the third book is called Inferno. On October the 6th, it'll be the third book in the Life in Exile series. October the 7th, it'll be City of Goblins. October 26th, the fourth book in the Underdog book series. October 27th, as well, it'll be the Eternal Online book number three. On November the 10th, it'll be the Heavenly Throne book number three, which is even kind of popular. Um, November 23rd, this one actually is a, um, a shift in titles, uh, originally it was a different titled series from Aurora Rice, whose first book is coming out uh, this month, I believe. And the listing changed to the second book in that same series. So it's now The Dungeon Seeker, a reborn online book number two series. Um, still on November 23rd, same link as we had before. It's just shifted titles and cover art. So that's up to the author. Um, but thank you for uh, one of the listeners that actually pointed that out to me. Um, on November 23rd as well is going to be Biomedical Self-Engineering, book number two. On December the 1st, it'll be the Twilight Hatchling Dreamstream Reality, book number two. On December the 3rd, League of Losers, book number two. December the 10th, it'll be Project Stellar, book number three. December 16th, the Interworld Network, book number three. December 28th, the second volume in the Small Unit Tactics series. And December 31st, the fifth book in the Arkemi Online Chronicle series. So there you go. All kinds of stuff coming out for you till the end of the year. Uh, on to new releases and reviews. Okay, first up this week is going to be Pre-Souls Apocalypse Rewind, a dark fantasy liberty series. Uh, there we go, written by James T. Callum. It is 500 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. When, that's probably not price all, it's probably not pre-sales, the price alls released, it was a brutal new virtual reality game with a twist. Be the first to beat the game and win billions of dollars. But after the Bergen Beast couldn't be defeated, price alls turned into very real turned very real and unleashed an apocalypse of undead monsters and a system of levels and stats on the world. For many years, Jacob Windsor had fought with sword and shield to survive post-collapse earth where only ancient guilt-soaked, guilt-soaked weaponry can harm the monsters from power souls. While defending his bunker with some of the last refugees of humanity, yet another friend loses his life to secure one final hope, an enigmatic artifact capable of sending one person through time. In a cruel twist of fate, Jacob becomes humanity's best chance for survival. He takes the plunge into the past of the terrifying, fractured realm of Prysols, where every player is out for blood, and the monsters are more vicious than anything on post-collapse Earth. Armed with the knowledge of the game mechanics, secret loot, and enemy weaknesses, along with a well-honed swordsmanship from years of battle, Jacob has every possible advantage against the competition, but the choices he makes have long-reaching ripple effects on the timeline. Can Jacob beat the clock while grinding? Up levels and manage to advert the apocalypse, or will his every action darken the timeline even further? Uh, so there you go. That's a, that's a pretty accurate description of what the story is about, including like the big, you know, plot points. Um, this is a regression story mixed with a Dark Souls game style. Uh, the regression portion is actually a, 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 a subcategory genre that I've recently got a name for is basically anyone from the future who doesn't necessarily go back physically to the past, but like they regress to an earlier point in their history and kind of re have a chance to relive their life with the foreknowledge of what was coming in the future. So you see the loss in like tower uh, progression games um, or sometimes up, uh, like apocalypse stories. In this case, it's it's a common combination of apocalypse and an MMO, <laughs> which is kind of a weird combo. Um, but the game styling in this is definitely um, inspired 
by the Dark Souls game series. Um, so if you've ever played that series, you're probably going to really enjoy this. I, I'm if, assuming you enjoyed the Dark Souls game series. Um, me, not so much. It's, it's uh, this ultimate story didn't kind of work for me because of that particular aspect. Um, and I played the Dark Souls games and I just, I just didn't like them that much. Um, I liked the RPG mechanics. I liked gaining stuff, but the, the pacing was so slow um, that I had a hard time enjoying the game. And the author in this particular novel is really faithful. He's like super faithful to the tone of that game and the mechanics there and the, um, like super incremental progression system um, and how skill is more important than the RPG mechanics necessarily. Um, And all that is definitely brought through very faithfully in this story. It's not a complete rip of Dark Souls, but it does take a lot of inspiration from those mechanics and kind of the tones of the story while including this kind of regression you know, storyline where the main character kind of technically knows what's going to be happening in this game world because he's played through at least part of it and is getting information about the rest of it. Um, and he's trying to change the future while popping back between the future and now using a jury, jury rigged kind of virtual reality system that's linking his past and, and occasionally back to the future to see how he's impacted it if, if his goal is completed enough to kind of alter the timeline. Um, and that premise is pretty decent. Like I said, it's not a bad premise and the storytelling is fine. It's just fundamentally the game mechanics were entertaining for me. Uh, and that's just something that's definitely personal to me. Um, if you like dark souls, if you love dark souls, man, if you love that system, you love that series. And a lot of people have, uh, you'll like this a lot more than me. It's just one of those weird kind of quirky things like, Oh, if I liked the series, if I'd like that game system, that game series, I probably would like this more, but I don't. And that that's definitely maybe as far as like the the tone of the story, it's very faithful. To that. So that's kind of, that's kind of for me the point of this. Um, that and like for me at least the cliffhangery ending. I was like, oh, that's nope, that didn't work for me either. Uh, but on the whole, I, I, this story is nothing wrong with it on a technical writing level. Um, the pacing was just a little bit too slow again, because the author is faithful to that original game series. Um, and the other aspects of it just don't work for me as well. Obviously like the incremental, uh, RPG progression, um, even though there's plenty of stats and numbers and everything and, and the author showing the same way you would on, you know, on, on the game mechanic side of it, the actual writing showing that the power progression was super incremental, more based on the player's skill than any of the RPG systems necessarily. Um, this didn't kind of work for me. And the future popping Mac thing didn't really add anything for me. Um, it was a little bit distracting. And I, I see by the end of the story why the other kept doing it, um, which I'm not going to spoil for you. But uh, like I said, just, just didn't work for me. Unfortunately. For me, it could score 6 out of 10. Again, that's not necessarily a bad score. It's just didn't work for me, but you might like it. And I've listed the reasons why. So that's Prior Souls, Apocalypse, Rewind, A Dark Fantasy, Little Bitchy Series, uh, Book 1 in the series. Book is definitely set up for Book 2 and Book 3, whatever. Uh, but for me, it just didn't quite work out. It doesn't mean it won't like it for you. If you like Dark Souls, I definitely recommend you giving this a shot. Uh, a lot of people really enjoy this story. It's just didn't work for me. So that's six out of 10 for pre-souls, uh, power souls, apocalypse rewind. And next up is fragment of divinity, a literal PD adventure to find divinity book. Number one written by Jamie Sultan. Um, it is 331 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle limited. And here's the author's description. A paramedic turned arcane warrior, an unforgiving world that weeds out the weak, a secret that will bring the gods to their knees. James has no idea why he was ripped from his life as a paramedic and transported to a strange new world with rules like those of a video game. But he knows he has to adapt quickly, and as ending up in a spider's belly was never on his high, never high on his to-do list. With only a vague quest, a mysterious brand, and promises of help from a cantankerous old lady to guide him, James must level up into the warrior his strange yet beautiful world so desperately needs. New allies join him on his journey, as they venture into the dwarven city high in the Crimson Mountains in pursuit of the first clue. Can James figure out the rules of this land in time to save it from its prophecy? Or will the dark secret contained in his mysterious brand consume him? There you go. Um, and that's, that's kind of accurate for the first 
I don't know, 10, 20% of the story. Um, so uh, full disclosure though, I received advanced copy for a view. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, this is a slice of life transported to a fantasy world story. Um, and I think the author has, has been pretty open about this, that this is his first novel that he's published. Um, and for me, when I was reading, I was like, oh yeah, I can tell. Uh, this is someone's first novel. And that's not to say that I um, ultimately overall didn't enjoy the story. Um, there were just small issues that you could like, oh yeah, that's something I remember learning. Uh, or I've, I've heard about other authors like learning about um, just, just things. Um, uh, there were a few formatting issues in the version. I remember I got a slightly early version of the story. So there are formatting issues with um, some of the text, some of the tables and getting tables correct. Um, is actually rather challenging, um, so that's not surprising. Um, there are like occasional technical writing errors, um, but for me, the bigger issues of like, oh, you can tell this is someone's first novel is story and progression details that weren't properly tracked for consistency. That's one of those things you, you eventually pick up is that I have like a huge spreadsheet of, of character names, events, character sheets for every single chapter because I know that readers um, we'll check it out and they'll, they'll actually catch the errors. Uh, and, and that's something a lot of literary authors have kind of, um, either done initially because they're very number focused or they're like data management or they're engineers or whatever the case is. Um, or they learn when they, when readers are like, Oh, that, that doesn't match this, this math doesn't work for some reason. Um, and that's just something you pick up as you continue on in your writing thing. Um, but there were definitely issues in the story where like, oh yeah, detail that was said at the beginning of the story, like directions to a particular place that involved um, bridges, for example. Um, when the main character eventually goes, they're like, hey, there's a notable lack of bridges from those directions here. And that's again, because the detail wasn't necessarily tracked as like, oh, something in a spreadsheet saying, oh yeah, refer back to this when you go to the actual directions or numbers specifically. The main character often in the story gets um, rewarded or deductions um, for certain actions. And sometimes those numbers weren't always tracked properly because when you then look at the next character sheet, which doesn't come up for, uh, uh, like too often, you'll check the numbers like, oh, these numbers don't reflect those changes anymore. And eventually towards the end of the story, I, I kind of realized the author made like, oh, I know those don't matter because of certain events towards the end make them less relevant necessarily. Um, so I understand from a writing perspective why those numbers weren't necessarily tracked as in depth as, as other authors would have been. I'm trying not to get swirly for you guys, really am. Um, but that's just one of those like, oh yeah, this is this is the first story. It's okay. It's, it's kind of, you give a little leeway when, when you, when you hear this is someone's first novel, because you know, everybody starts somewhere and they get better. And none of this is bad or any way, shape, or form. It's just, Oh, okay. I, I recognize that, that issue and it'll hopefully be fixed, uh, in later, um, stories in the series. Um, for me, a bigger issue though, was that there were some sudden story shifts um, and some real one wavy moments in the novel where I was like, oh, especially if it was many of the end of the story, where it was like, oh, this is, this is, you could tell that this is something somebody wrote for fun over a longer period of time um, because there are sudden shifts in the story that don't, that could have necessarily done a little bit better because the horse of, and I'll get into this a little bit in a second, exactly why. Um, but Overall, I think I still had a good time with the story, despite those, again, those are like kind of relatively small issues that distracted from my enjoyment of the story to a degree, but overall, I still had a good time with it. Um, it's just, you have to be aware of what you're getting into. So you don't set your expectations for something that is not going to be able to be met. Um, the story aspects of the novel, essentially again, slice life story. You follow the main character as he gets sent to a fantasy RPG world. He fights monsters, harvests plants and part monster parts, learns spells, skills, explores the world and learns about it. Um, and there's a real casual tone in like the first third of the book where it is super slice of life. There's kind of these subplots about him completing a quest with the hopes of being sent back to his world and a contest. Um, and those seem like they're more series goals because they're not really developed in this particular novel. Um, and they're supposed to be a motivation for the main character for to go explore the world. That's kind of all they end up being. Um, and a lot is made up to do, made to do about that, um, those, those particular plot lines in the beginning of the trip, but they're not really followed through or really developed in this particular novel. Again, it, it seems like they're more long-term series 
plot lines. Um, in about thirty, about at the thirty-three percent mark of the story, the story actually shifts um, tremendously. Um, it, it goes from a casual exploration and training thing to like some seriously intense scenario. Then it happens again about the sixty percent mark. So, um, I, I think this is. I, I have a high couple theories as to why this happens. Um, one, the author may have just kind of got bored at the casual start and wanted to try more serious plot points, or he had these plot points in mind all along because they are very specifically noted at about the third and the 60% work. Um, and he wanted to hit these particular plot points, and so he kind of rushed the transition between them. Um, and so because, I mean, I'm talking about like seriously abrupt transitions, um, because of those abrupt it, it, it just felt real awkward in the shifting between these like sections of the story. And so not that the sections individually aren't well told or interesting or entertaining. It's the transition between them because they are so suddenly done. Um, they felt a bit random and they, they lessened my enjoyment because those transition statements weren't those transition actually scenes or descriptions just didn't, uh, it, it kind of felt like, when in a, in a tabletop game, when like the DM kind of feels like the players are messing around too much and he wants to get them back on his well detailed campaign, and he's like, and suddenly you guys have been magically transported somewhere else. And that's like a huge clue that <laughs> your, your dungeon master wants you to actually get back on plot point. That's there were events at those, at those, at those percentage marks in the story that kind of feel like that in the story. Um, not those exact things, obviously, but still, uh, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, positive things that I really enjoyed the story that really were, were, were positive things. One of the biggest things I say is the detailed descriptions of anatomy, healing and medicine in the story. I think that's probably the thing that makes it sound the most. Um, the author's medical knowledge um, it does something to kind of add to the story where there are precise descriptions of monster anatomy, um, using har harvesting monster parts or the human anatomy used to describe a broken rib or how a punctured lung, punctured lung is healed. Um, I think those aspects are probably things that make this stand out as being a little bit different in a positive way. Um, there's also a nice sense of humor that pokes fun at liturgy and RPG tropes that I thought was really funny. And the gamer mentality and fun of playing an RPG really comes through well in the story. Um, the RPG mechanics themselves are, are fairly standard. Levels, XP, classes, skilled notifications. Nothing too outrageous. Um, I'd say a, f a couple of things that bug me a little bit is like the rapid progression of levels throughout the story. Um, sometimes felt a little unjustified. I mean, they're explaining the story. Like levels 1 through 10 are, 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 are rapidly increased because he needs to survive in this world. Um, and he's given a particular item that allows some like bonus experience or lessened experience points to a level. Um and I thought once that cap was hit at 10, oh, the leveling is going to slow down. But instead, the author continues that really rapid leveling by making the main character face and defeat um, monsters and enemies that were like super more powerful so that the XP amount he's getting increases, which I thought was, it's it's a, definitely a storytelling decision. Um, and I respect that decision. It just bugged me because the difference in levels sometimes may seem like, oh, the main character shouldn't survive this at all in any shape or form. Um, and so that bothered me a little bit um, on the on game mechanics side. Um, one of the things is see, yeah, and the one we've been were something else that kind of bugged me, which again, I've mentioned already, which was the mid and end of the story. There were definitely these points where the main character is super out leveled. And I mean by, I don't know, 200 levels sometimes um, or 30 times what his current level is. And he's facing enemies and traps and dungeons sometimes where there's no way he should come out alive or unharmed. Um, and he does. And I was like, Oh, like it's sort of explaining the story why it happens. So like there's, there's sort of a story to the game, but it felt on a numbers on a gut number feeling I'm like, Oh, that Matt, Nope. Matt, Matt doesn't work out my brain. Um, and so that, that lesson might do it just a, a bit as well. Um, one of the things I thought was going to be really cool in the story was that there were serious consequences and I was for stupid behavior. And because sometimes they were followed through for like multiple chapters and it was like really emphasized, this is permanent. This is a permanent consequence. I was like, oh, that, that's, that is interesting. That, that's a real, you're sticking to that story to us. And I definitely respected it until the point where they were magically erased. And I was like, oh, I, oh man, I like that aspect of it. Um, but again, small things. Overall, I like the story. I did. Um, I had a nice time reading it. 
I, I personally like the first third of the best. I, I like slice of life stories. Excuse me. I like slice of life stories. I like sometimes casual reading with the main characters just exploring their world because it gives me an opportunity as a reader to see the things he's exploring, to understand the game mechanics, understand like the politics and how this culture um, is integrated into the RPG mechanic system. Um, and I like that first third, which is a little more casual and slice of life. I don't, it's not like you didn't like the rest of it. It's just I like that first third the best, I would say. Um, and again, those mid and late story issues where it's a little more wand wavy or it's a little like forced in particular story plot lines. I was like, those were fine as well. It's just that they felt forced and they felt a little wand wavy, which are issues for me personally. If you don't have those issues, you'll like this even more than I will. Uh, but again, I like the thing that distinguished the most, realistic anatomy, realistic medical knowledge, medical knowledge of healing and monster harvest, and I think that was a nice little depth of knowledge from, from the author that shone through as something that was kind of neat and special. So for me, I had a good time with it. Uh, gets a score of 7.2 out of 10, lower on any enjoyment scale, but still had a good time with it. It's Fragment of Divinity, a literary adventure defying divinity book number one, with a score of 7.2 out of 10. Okay, folks, this is the uh, last review of the show this week. It's going to be Second Life Rinker. Um, it is 68 chapters uh, plus, um, more translated on a monthly basis. It's free, technically. Um, there is no official English license for this, so everything you're going to read online is going to be um, fan scan and fan translated for your enjoyment. Um, and uh, if there's ever an official English release, we'll, we'll change the the links in the show notes or in the in, in the review for portion of this to the official version of it. But in, in the meantime, we will link to a, to a free version of this that you can enjoy. Um, but also, you could also just do a regular, you know, Google search for the title and, and find the the online web comic. Um, I should also know that there is a fan translated light novel version of this, which is actually the basis of the comic, uh, the web comic. Uh, but this review is for the comic specifically. Um, here's the novel description, or the comic description in this case. Yeon Wu had a twin brother who disappeared five years ago. One day, a pocket watch left by his brother returned to his possession. Inside, he found a hidden diary in which was recorded, By the time you hear this, I guess I will already be dead. Obelisk, the Tower of the Sun God, a world where several universes and dimensions intersect. In this world, his brother had fallen victim to betrayal while climbing up the tower. After learning the truth, the Yan Wu decided to climb the tower along with his brother's diary. For now on, I am Cha Yang Wu. I don't know what the difference is. I think that's a translation thing. Okay, that's the description. That that simple. This is a tower climbing novel. Um, and it starts off really strong with the main character um, and gets to the RPG mechanics elements very quickly in the, in the comic version. Um, from the get-go, the main character is strong, not overwhelmingly so, but he's definitely strong enough that he's kind of a badass. And he uses the foreknowledge he's given from his brother's diary um, to maximize the bonuses he gets as he goes through the beginning tower and and on to the extra other tower aspects. Um, there's action almost every single chapter of this novel. I'm sorry, this web webcomic. Um, and that's, that's probably the, the best part of it. It's a really good pacing, really action-oriented. Um, and there's kind of this revenge theme that comes in and out that continues to be motivation for the main character, but it doesn't detract from like his logic and cool-headedness, which is, again, um, just kind of the tone of this. The, there are social and physical conflicts in the novel between the main character and the player, so that's a nice break from the monster fights as well. Um, on the RPG side of things, it's pretty normal. Lots of notifications, lots of stats and abilities, um, with items that can be purchased in one or found that may boost specific abilities or stats. Lots of notifications again in, in, in the comic version of this. Um, on the art side of things, I'll actually show you what the art looks like, um, so you can get a chance to see what that is. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this is a you know version of this is the first chapter of the webcomic. Um, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, of course, um, I'm showing. I'm just scrolling through that first chapter so you can see what it looks like. The art style is okay. It's a little cell shady for me, um, but there's nice nice action still that comes through, um, and there's nice color and details, and it's in it's in full color as a webcomic, um, and it gets the story across in a nice action way. So there you go. And again, lots of lots of notifications there. Um, overall, 
I had a nice time with it. Um, it's again very action oriented as a webcomic, and I read like almost all 68 chapters in like I think one or two sittings. So that's how much I enjoyed it. Good score 7.6 out of 10 for me. Uh, that's Second Life Rinker as a webcomic gets the score of 7.6 out of 10. The ebook version of it, the light novel version of it, was a little harder <laughs> to get through, which is why I'm reviewing the, the comic version of it, which is much more visually appealing for me, at least. And I'll have links in the show notes for both the light novel version and the webcomic version. So there you go. Okay, that's it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me talk about this genre that I love, Load RPG and the web comics and all the plagiarism stuff and all the news and reviews. Uh, remember, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, on YouTube, Patreon, on our website at LoadRPGPodcast.com. Um, we also have links in the show notes for all the Load RPG Facebook groups that we regularly talk to, where authors, Load RPG authors and readers meet and talk and share memes and just do a bunch of cool stuff. Um, and if you want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, you can find out all the ways to support us at rpgpodcast.com slash support. And remember, thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. And until we can do so again, remember to go read some Lit RPG.